All right. Ready? And welcome to another interview today with the Zero Twist It Course channel. I'm really happy to be joined by old friend Stuart Childs. Hello. <laughs> I just I can't stop laughing. <laughs> we're going to be uh, looking at these uh, cool chip on boards that uh, Stuart had done for us recently in uh, Shenzhen. And we've got a bunch of uh, great photos and videos to share, like this one. So if you want to see how the journey of taking the dies to Shenzhen and going through the process of getting a functional chip on board, uh, then stick around for the rest of this interview. So, Stewie baby. <laughs> Matt, mate. We met like a... Uh, we met on the internet, which is one of my favorite stories. In Stockables, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've done tons of projects together and now you're involved in Tiny Tape Out. Yeah. Um, so if you've if you've ever received a, a tiny tape out um, board in one of the lovely development kits, or worn one of these hats, or stuck a tiny tape out sticker, then uh, this is this is the man to thank. <laughs> oh yeah, and the QC stickers, the the funny uh, quickly checked Q stickers. Stuart's our um, uh, CMO, yeah. Chief Merch Officer, <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, on a recent trip to Shenzhen, you, um, we finally got around to doing this wire bonding extravaganza. Yeah, I guess it came out or came about because you knew I'd, um, I'd had some experience working with wire bonding at previous projects. Uh, and part of that was finding suppliers over in Shenzhen and Dongguan over in, in China. Um, and so I got to know places where you can do this and what the ins and outs are. I, I mean, no, by no means an expert. I don't know the full. I've not not read the book <laughs> on wire bond, on wire bonding. Um, but when you mentioned, oh, we've got some bad eyes. I'd like to do something. I thought, well, I could probably help with that. So, and they were more than happy to help us out, which was really great. You know, I kind of showed up with a piece of paper with a hand drawn diagram on and uh, a waffle pack full of chips and some boards we'd had done. Um, we so Tamash, you mentioned should designing boards. Should we board. show those? Should we got we got some pictures of that, don't we? You yeah. Know yeah let's have a look where Tamash is crazy board here we go there's a, there's a nice picture of the board so we had the boards fabbed and pcb aid with these headers over at jlc pcb because it's their service is great it's it's fast and it's cheap the one mistake we did make is uh putting these headers on first uh, the guys running the bonding machine said that caused them a bit of challenge with the clearance they had to be very careful how they were programming the bonds into the machine um and they said next time <laughs> please don't bring the board to the head do, do it on the bare boards first and then do the or, although you know what with the once you've got your, your chip bonded and, and blocked up on the board you can't really put it through a solder paste process yeah. no? well the alternative would be maybe to put those headers on the bottom of the board okay that would solve, that would solve yeah. it um so yeah so tamash designed his board and uh, Again, he, spent, he did quite a bit of research, and I think these these sort of wobbly loops around where the chip goes are for power and ground. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, the guys at the factory were like, yeah, they seem to be fairly impressed with the design. So you can see this pink blob uh, here. That's that's some glue, and that's how you bond the die itself to the board before the, the wire bonding. Um, yeah, well, yeah, we were saying also that, like, Normally, when we get the chips, they're already packaged in this black plastic QFN epoxy part. We no normally don't get to see the dye. So, if we want yeah. the dyes, we have to, yeah, but we have to uh, send them to someone who like uh, extracts them with acid and mm -hmm. um, takes photos of them. Um, but if you get them like this, they look pretty. And I yeah. um, put the, I like have had them mounted in epoxy so that they like make a nice gift but they should be functional but you have to if you want them to work you have to connect all the wires and that's what wire bonding is yeah and so the, the, these chips um came in in a gel pack so this is the this is a gel pack um so these chips are all sort of s adhered with low uh force or low, low adhesion to into the pack um so when we took them to the to the factory, they were this is they were taking them out the the gel pack with with tweezers. There. Um, do we talk about taking the wrong ICs to the factory? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we wanted to do this with Tony Take About Two, but uh, we had two sets of dice then. Yeah, so you sent me one gel pack one time, and Uri sent another gel pack, mm -hmm. and I wasn't clear myself which ones to take. It was 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I rolled the dice and I got yeah. it wrong. Um, so, yeah, so we got the zero choice at course MPW seven group submission instead of tiny tape out two. Yeah, so that was totally fine. my fault. I, yeah. oh, here we go. So here's, so here's here's one of the ICs adhered to the board. So that's got the, the pink blob of blue we saw before, and that's now stuck down to the board. Um, I guess so it doesn't matter exactly like exactly where it is. It's like got to be roughly in the middle, and then yeah, maybe... it, not not exactly because the the machine itself, when they're calibrating it, mm. it's, got, it's got a camera here, and you, yeah. so this is the the die here yeah. under the, the 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 camera, and you program in the wires according to the location of the pads on mm. the die. So even if the the die is slightly um, out of place, the the machine, sh I believe, should compensate for that. I also I just love the look of the I mean look at it. The, I love the uh, the screwdriver just sticking out. Yeah, yeah, screwdriver sticking out. Well, I think that is for so. This is the head around this yeah. this area, so we can see. Oh, where's the wire? You can see the wire on the screen. There's the wire there. Yeah, and it feeds down. Oh, which way does it go? It goes. I think it, I don't know which way it's going. It's some here, some there, but yeah. You you need to tweak these machines quite a lot in the setup and. Oh, it's going to be a terrible picture. Here's the kind of, I don't know what it's called, needle, needle, and the the wire goes through that, and that that can they can sometimes break when you're doing the setup. Yeah. And then you have to re-thread this vanishingly thin wire through a near invisible hole to then. I remember trying it. You, do you still have that manual wire bonder in your? Lab. No, I, we got we got rid of it, but it looked like this. Yeah. So this, uh, yeah, I had a machine like this. Yeah. That, and we, we, we kind of I tried using it. it, and I spent like two or three hours. I, I, I don't. It probably wasn't that long. It felt like felt like that long, and all I managed to do was like thread it, and then immediately break the thread like two or three Thank times. <laughs> thankless. Yeah. Thank. Yeah. I, I went through the same journey. Um, yeah. You got all excited. Oh, we got a bonding. Oh, we can do a bonding ourselves. This is a highly skilled. Um, job or um, mm. a process so I mean again this is this machine will be I don't know 30 plus years old I would have thought um, yeah. and yes just threading the wire through that tiny hole getting it already spending yeah, maybe 25 half an hour 25 minutes half an hour doing that pressing the button to go and it breaks and mm. you're yeah, back to uh, yeah I, I very quickly gave up on the idea of becoming a wire bonder um, <laughs> so where were we so so yeah the, yeah the kind of yeah, it's, but it's interesting to see. I think what I thought was interesting to see, like the contrast, the st quite stark contrast between the where the ships are fabricated in in a in a foundry, in a right, clean which room. Is, yeah. yeah, which is the cleanest of clean. Um, is there a new term that's beyond clean <laughs> for those places? Yeah. Uh, um, and and then the this factory, right, which yeah. is you know. Um, not not a clean room mm. <laughs> by any means i mean this is one of the this is where they do some automatic gluing on some of their boards i mean that is great i love it i, I you yeah. know it, you, you can tell it's used That's and cool. uh, yeah but but um i think you mentioned in the in the blog post the results spoke for themselves really um i think we had it was less than one percent bond fail rate um when they did the bonding out of almost 2,000 wire bonds. So perfectly good for us. Um, do you want to have a quick look at the bonding then? Maybe this one? Yeah. So you can see once it's all been programmed in, this machine is now bonding the wires from the, the die pads to the PCB. And you can see where the, the issue is with the clearance with the, the head here. Yeah, and, that and makes the, a quick and, move with the needle being low. Yeah, you have to be really careful. They had to do some funny rotations, maybe like around here. Mm. Yeah, it's really close. Um, again, again, that was down to our um, inexperience mm. in, in designing boards to, to be bonded. This is the guy running the machine. He he was great. They were, they're all really nice in there, and he was. You know, I, I love this photo actually. Um, he seemed to 
I mean, he knew what he was doing, right? Um, he runs his machine, I guess. I think they have two shifts in this factory. They used to do three um, shifts. Um, why one thing is kind of, it seems to be less and less of a thing people are doing now of, of bear die. Um, mm. And, but yeah, it, um, it was just really nice to be there and, and kind of see them doing their craft. It was uh, cool to take photos as well. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends on the on the on the place and the relationship you've got with them, really. Um, uh, so, okay. So, here's, here's a picture. Let's of have the, a look at yeah when it's just done. Yeah. So, I mean, I I just had my my phone camera. Yeah, you not can bad though. Just see. I mean, these are. I don't know what what thickness wire we were using, but it's it's in the microns. The pe the pads mm -hmm. are I think like maybe a hundred microns wide, like a tenth of a millimeter. So probably yeah. that wire is. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's like a standard size, but yeah. Well, there's this, yeah, there's various standard sizes, and then also there's two different wire materials as well, so aluminium and gold. Mm. Um, and while we were investigating this with the, the tiny tape out team, um, there was a lot of talk of oh, we need to use gold, we need to use gold, but this place only uses aluminium. Um, and I said, and, and I spoke to them and I asked them, well, would aluminium be suitable for this? They said, yeah, it should be totally fine, no problem. So we gave it to go, and yeah, as I mentioned before, the the kind of the the yield of the the good bonds was really fantastic. So once you've got the wires added and bonded between the die and the PCB, they're fairly fragile, so you need to protect them, um, and um, that's done with glue, so the pox two part epoxy type glue. Um, this is well, after it's been mixed up. Is put, this so because we only did a small amount. This is this was manually added to the mm. boards with this um, this guy here. So I'm just trying to think. He mixed it? up the, the two part glue himself, and then he put it in the, in this this machine here. With, um, it? Yeah, degas it. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, that that was a vacuum chamber. Down. Yeah, and then he put it into a syringe. And oh, here we go. So this yeah, this was just manually done. So that that there's the bare die there with the bonds, and then this is just applying it it's got a foot switch or something to pump it yeah out. yeah and i was quite interested to see that, that the wires can you can do this to the wires right so they're not um so fragile that they can't stand having some glue on applied. yeah so here the, the, the goal here is, i mean you'll often see black blobs on circuit boards and consumer equipment yeah and this this will be the, the equivalent i mean the reason we wanted to use transparent colorless glue is so we can see the chip and the bonds. This this glue is more commonly used for LEDs and mm. that kind of thing. Because um, believe it or not, there are still a lot of LEDs that are coming in bare die form. Well, all those WS twenty eight twelve intelligent LEDs are done with like these four separate dies: the control of the red, green, and the blue, and then they're all wire bonded. If yeah. you look under a microscope, you can see that quite easily. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think usually for a uh, more complex. A circuit, a more complex chip. People would use um, black, opaque glue yeah. to protect against UV, right? Well, and, and um, semiconductors are photosensitive, so if you like mm -hmm. flash a, a very bright light, you can reset a chip. There was that problem with the Raspberry Pi, wasn't there? Yeah, there was a, a thing, long yeah. time ago yeah, um, yeah. where it would reset if you took a picture yeah. with a flash. And that's why on this board, there's like you can see um, there's the footprints for two little clips for a. Uh, like a radio yeah, yeah. cage to fit on top. So, yeah. Well, well, yeah. It's just gonna give it give it some protection if we needed, right? It was when you, well, I guess, when you're designing a PCB, it's easier to add things before than after. Yeah, like um, those mounting holes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and, and then so once the glue is added, then it gets baked in an oven. Uh, I don't think I have a picture of that, but it gets baked in an oven for I don't know 20, 25 minutes, something like that. I yeah. don't know the temperature. Um, I quite liked where there was one. There was one where the chip was being cleaned with a cotton bud. Uh, yeah, that was it. I got that picture anyway. Yeah, because when the chips no, come out of the factory, they're they're like they're pr they're they're protected already. Like even though they're bare dyes, they they've got a very thin top coating of glass essentially, with just holes mm. cut out for the the pads to be bonded. Yeah, um, so they're already pretty rugged. Yeah, I don't have that picture, I'm afraid. But um, in a different and, uh, yeah, and, and that was the process, really. Um, mm. I mean, it, I just, it was really 
great of, of them to help us out with this with with, with this project this is yeah. the the boss is the boss of the factory here uh, and he he made a point of coming over and you know tell, checking what people were doing and uh you know making sure that if i had any questions i could ask and things like that um he was really accommodating um and one thing he said is that we're the only non-domestic customers he's ever had right um, so he's he's used to yeah he usually only works with with other chinese companies um, yeah. and he doesn't really ha hasn't done anything else with with um for foreigners or you know non-chinese people before um yeah. and he was great you know we, we well, when i went we, we, we just hang out and quite it's quite common to have, have tea with with um whoever you're having a meeting with there and just you know chatting and i it was definitely stretching the limits of my mandarin which is <sighs> usable but as soon as you veer off the beaten path into technical uh, discussion then it gets it's beyond me but um yeah it was really nice and and one thing they said is if we do need to try something else then we could we could go over and we can have another go perhaps with the correct ICs <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you have a QFN package you have what's called a, a lead frame which is like a little stamped piece of metal where the the leads of the chip are going to be and then the die goes in that, and then the, they're still wire bonded, but those wires are much, much shorter. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, a better package for lower inductance. So one of the problems with the longer wires is uh, you get worse performance out of the IO, which is already fairly bad on our chips. Um, so, but as an educational thing, um, I think it's, it's, I mean, it's lovely to be able to see the chip. I was hoping that when you look at it under a microscope, you'd be able to see more of the details. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can't really because of the 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 epoxy isn't that epo uh, optically clear and i don't know also the chips are kind of boring on the top anyway you have to like mm -hmm. scrape off the top metal to see like the interesting stuff underneath um but yeah definitely worth doing as an experiment and um super cool to have this like um board with this little uh flashing light here showing that it's working <laughs> All that work. All that work to flash an LED. Sorry, mate. Quickly checked. And it's not even tiny tape out too. It's mm -hmm. here at Oasis MPW7. Um, but we are going to have a couple of those in the tiny tape out shop um, in the future, as well as hats like this. Uh, so if you want to support the cause, then uh, check out the, the shop. I'll put a link to that in the um, description of the video. Anything else you want to mention, Stu? I found a picture with the um, cotton bud cleaning the top of the dye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just, I love it. I, you know, there's this. I, I once went to a factory and they were picking dyes out of a waffle pack with a piece of bamboo yeah. that they wet. They wet the bamboo, then use the surface tension and the moisture on the bamboo to pick the ICs out. Of, and and then and stuff still works. Yeah. You know, like it's just yeah. I love it. So I thought yeah, I'd get a picture of that. Yeah. So you don't need. Um... The, uh, the highest quality gear to still make things and learn things and have fun. So I think it does help. Uh, it, it does, does help. Yeah. Uh, but no, don't don't wait to get everything perfect to start learning. I think that's a good uh, lesson mm -hmm. to take away from that. Cool. Okay. Well, thanks, Stu, for your time. Thanks for giving us an uh, a info and insight into the wire bonding process. And um, yeah, see you around over the. Uh, on the some for some future interview on thank you for, some more uh, some more uh, Chinese assembly maybe in the future for our contact manufacturer. Yeah, thank you for give, thank you for giving me uh, the opportunity to go back to see <laughs> yeah. my mate after seven years and um, yeah get some more wire bonding done. That was really great. Enjoyed it. So thanks. Cool. Cheers, everyone. Bye. -bye.